Hey, you! Hey! You! You! Yes, you. What's up? Scroll through Twitch right now. Click on any stream at random, and chances are you're going to see a stream that looks kind of like this. What does our layout look like? What kind of transitions do they have? Ooh, look. A cut. Is that a fade? Oh my gosh, a stinger. <laughs> Too bad everyone and their mom has one of those today. You don't want to have a mom stream. You want to have a stream that stands out from the crowd. And I'm going to help you get there using five plugins you can install in OBS today. Let's give your stream some flash. Hey, how's it going, folks? I want a sandwich here. Or not. Before we go any further, I just want to let you know that I do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On top of that, we have an awesome Discord server where you can ask questions about any of these things you see in this video or, or make suggestions on stuff. We're always there, we're willing to hang out. Come on in. The water's fine. I've been streaming for about five years. About four of them, I was one of those boring streamers that you saw earlier. I had that the the cut transitions, the fade transitions. I used Luma Wipe for a while, um, and then I got a stinger, and that was pretty cool. But nowadays, literally none of that stands out. I want to explore a world where I could bring my streams to life. That's where I found the OBS plugins. I went from this to this. This is supposed to be a starting soon stream. I haven't done the. I want to do like some gradient overlay, then it. Fades in, it's pretty basic. Does the gameplay stuff. I don't have anything on right now, but because I'm over here, I'm at a different computer, baby. And I'm here to help you get to that point too. So let's get your stream revamped literally overnight. Let's just get to it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Did it go? No! Did the sponsor go? Cool. Now, some of you may be like, Get with the program. Seriously, though, that's the point. I don't usually hear of, of popular broadcasters talking about the plugins that they use in OBS or whatever broadcasting software they use. So don't feel bad if you haven't heard about them or didn't know about them before. Now, you might be wondering, I don't know how I feel about the imp my impression of you guys. The plugins I'm going over today only work with OBS Studio. We're not going to talk about working with Slobs or XSplit or OBS Classic. Who uses that anymore? I don't know. No offense, Streamlabs. Installing these plugins is super easy. It's literally take the file that you downloaded. You drag and drop from the download folder to the OBS installation folder. It's super easy. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the first plugin. So Stream Effects is one of the most powerful and versatile plugins that is on this list. It allows you to add all kinds of effects to your sources, mirroring those sources and layering effects on more effects on more effects if that's your thing. It lets you add shaders and tons of other things. Some of the things may seem a little bit gimmicky, but that's what makes it fun. You get to play around with it and see what kind of fits your style. If you play around with this plugin, I promise you you'll find something that'll help you stand out from the guys that are next door or surrounding you on that browser page in Twitch. Here are some of the uses I have for this plugin in my stream. Pokemon cards, yes. I'll be opening um, up a few of those on, so I've opened up half of this box right here. The first one, the other half isn't open yet. That is technically my daughter's box. Yeah, I know. They're pretty cool. I'm sure you guys are way more creative than I am. See what you can come up with. Show me. Okay, so the next one, I kind of just piggybacked off of the last one. This plugin adds some extra filters that you can add to sources. It comes with a ton built in. Unfortunately, not all of them work. I'll show you in some other videos probably down the road, how you can sort of layer these things on top of each other or make them work with, uh, you know, chat interaction or other things like that, because the potential, it's up there. So that's around with it. See what you can come up with. See what works for you. Moving right along. 
The next one, I should have a diagram up on screen showing you something because it's gonna be difficult to explain, but I'll do my best. Have you ever used the built-in override transition feature? If you haven't, it's pretty cool. But this transition matrix is way cooler and quite frankly, a lot more useful. It may look a little complicated, but just bear with me. Let's say you, you like your transition override for your intermission screen, but you come across that one time where you just wish you could use a different transition when you're coming from, say, the game play scene. Just whip open that matrix and right click on the appropriate box to change the transition that plays when you go from your game scene to your intermission screen. It won't affect the transition program when going the other way. This is one of the more complicated plugins, and it may seem a little bit daunting to the beginners, but bear with me, I promise you'll see how useful it can be, especially for the single PC setup guys. If you get it working, it's totally worth it. I haven't found a good way to utilize its full capabilities into my two PC streaming setup yet, but for all you single PC streamers out there, it will work wonders. Here's how I use it. Here's the box that should show up once you get the advanced scene switcher installed. You just go to tools, select advanced scene switcher, and it brings this, this box up. Each of these tabs has settings and rules you can apply to OBS that will allow it to switch scenes automatically for you. So you can do it based off window title, screen region, scene sequence, executable file, idle detection, pause tab allows you to turn off the scene switcher when you're on certain scenes. It can change based off transitions. You can have random, write to file, read from file, certain media, and time-based scene switching. I'll do a full video on that probably in the future because I'm still messing around with it. But so far, in my limited use, it's been awesome. And last, but definitely not least, this one is my favorite plugin that I've used so far. It's simple, but it looks so sleek. It's so elegant. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. This is called the move transition. You know, we, we all see those stingers. We all see the fades. We see the cuts. We see all that stuff. But how often do you see a move transition? You know when you're watching the news and they have the news anchor sitting on the stream, but then his, his camera box shrinks and gets smaller so they can bring on the person they're interviewing and that put them side by side? I love how seamless that looks. That's been one of the things I've been trying to find for years. Just look how slick this bad boy is. This plugin alone can make your transition stand out above the crowd right off the bat. There is so much you're able to do with this transition and I'm not even scratching the surface. Maybe I'll make a dual tutorial with the advanced scene switcher and the move transition. That way we kill two birds with one stone. I don't know. Leave comments in the, in the description below to let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for this video. If you have any suggestions or if you want to show us something cool that you've done with any of these transitions, hit us up in the description below. Hit us up in that Discord. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see what you, what you come up with. You're, I mean, you're probably way more creative than I am anyway, so... Give me some of those ideas. I'll see you guys next week. Remember to bring your sandwich. Sandwiches. Adios.